In this video, I'll show you how to paint the Lumineth Realm Lords. Here we go then with these Lumineth Realm Lords. So we've primed up with some Wraithbone. I absolutely have fallen in love with these models. They're so dynamic, they're so cinematic. Um, what we want to do is we want to make, or oh, I'm going to make them, I'm going to follow the box art, I want them to be as bright as possible. Lumen, light, bright. So we're going with a really light base. And what I want to do is I want to just shade all the, or shade, paint all the clothing with some Shabti Bone. So I should only need one coat of this. We're just going to follow the box art and paint up all the kind of bits of clothing with the Shabti Bone. It just kind of darkens it down a little bit, but it enables us to get a, a nice highlight. I mean, we could have leave it Wraith Bone and then use some Skeleton Horde to to shade it but then it doesn't really give us the depth I think that that these models deserve so you can see it's gone on really nice and easy there the Ashabdi bone so just work your way around follow the box art and then once I've got all that painted we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll look to shade it. There we are we've got a nice uh, cream on the on the clothing there so to shade that it's going to take some skeleton horde contrast paint now, I'm not thinning it down but I'm making sure I haven't got too much on my brush and I'm not uh, I've got a good point as well and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade where you've got the kind of bits of material meeting like that and I'm also going to shade in the kind of the folds so that you get a kind of a subtle highlight there and the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want it to be too stark against against the cloth so have a look at the box art and just try and as close as you can follow along where the folds are in the clothing okay so take your time with this it's not too much of an issue if you go a little bit wide so for you I've gone a little bit wide with it there that's fine as it dries it'll pull closer and if it's still a little bit stained then it's a really easy fix with some shabdi bone so work your way around and then we'll get all that done we'll come back we'll pop a little highlight on it next so there we go we've got a little bit of definition in there now so let's just highlight uh, highlight up the robes and for that we're going to use a little bit of screaming skull emphasis on the little bit and we're just going to look for where we've got the kind of big folds there and we're just going to highlight the most raised areas taking your time again if it goes on a bit too thick or you make a mistake you're not happy just take some shabdi bone and you can re-highlight that um, and if you're wondering where this chap's head is i left it off because i thought it'd be a lot easier to to paint some of the detail on it and in all honesty I'd probably have left that backpack off again if I uh, if I had my time again so maybe if I paint some more of these I'll leave a backpack off just because it's going to be really difficult to get into the shield there so just work your way around the model find all those raised edges and get the screaming skull on them and then we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll base up the armor next so for all the armor we're going to base this with some pallid witch flesh so this is a, it's kind of like an off-white, uh, and again, it should go over with just the just the one coat. So it might be difficult to see against the wraith bone. So just make sure, take your time to cover it. And the reason I'm using this is kind of like a little off-white, because I think the if we went in with just white, we wouldn't really have anywhere to go in terms of shading and highlighting it. So I think the the pallid witch flesh is nice it's kind of a a creamy off-white which then ties it quite nicely to the to the robes uh, and means that it doesn't get uh, too out of control so just all the white armor get that covered in pallid witch flesh if you're not sure which bits that is then uh, just check the box art get that done and then we'll we'll come back we're not going to shade that uh, we're going to leave it there but what we are going to do is the trim and we're going to use quite a dark color to start the trim so once we've got that base coated, we want to um, get all the trim of the armor base coated as well. And I should say as well, I used that pallid witch flesh for the uh, kind of lighter bits on the on the garments and on the kind of the banner flowing there. So for the lighter gold, which is kind of all the trim really on uh, on the model, and this this is going to take a little bit of time. And you're going to have to be quite careful. 
uh, doing some of these pieces. But I'm going to kind of show you on the shield on the back. So we're going to take some dryad bark. We're going to base all of that, which is going to be the kind of the lighter gold with this dryad bark. So I've thinned this down quite a bit. But the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of line in uh, very carefully the edges there. So you can see it's, you can be a little bit more uh, or a little bit faster on the edges. Uh, but when it comes to the kind of the bits that hold in there, we just want to take our time. Now it's okay if we run over onto this bit because we're going to paint that silver. So that's fine, but we just want to, that bit we finished in Pallid Witch Flesh, we just want to, want to take our time with. So this is probably going to be uh, the most time consuming part of painting the model because there's so much light gold and you do need to take your time on that. Uh, so when I talk about the armor trim, I'm talking about absolutely everything. So, you know, you've got on the, this part of the armor here. So again, just want to be really careful working that dryad bark on. Okay, so work your way around all the model, get that dryad bark on all the the trim, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll start on the darker gold. And the reason we're going to start on the darker gold next is because we're going to get that trim in, but the darker gold will be highlighted by the same gold we'll use to paint all that trim. So there we go, that's all the kind of trim done with that dryad bark. I hope I've got all the kind of bits that are going to be uh, a lighter gold colour. So what we want to do now is we want to base up the uh, the dark color uh, sorry the darker gold and for this we're going to use retributor armor so again look at, at the the box art you know there's the kind of emblem on the chest there there's the handle for the lantern here so we're just going to pop the the retributor armor on it be really careful there's lots of uh, fiddly bits to paint on these on these elves, I guess they are worth it because they look so good afterwards. Um, things like the sword hilt. And then we've got on the back there, we've got the kind of all the decoration around uh, the weaponry. And we've also got the runes on the, the kind of top there, which I'll finish off calm just because it's easy to hold the model and kind of get right in there. So there we are, follow the box art, get all the kind of darker gold done with your retributor armor, and we'll come back and shade that next. Now that we've got all that Reichland, uh, sorry, retributor armor done, we're going to shade it with some Reichland flesh shade. So this is for the most part a really simple, straightforward exercise like that. Uh, I'm sure you'll be glad because we've been doing some quite fiddly bits uh, just getting these done. Uh, so just be careful when you come to the shield, you don't want to get any over the white shield. Everything else isn't isn't too bad. And um, what we want to do with the, the kind of the chest emblem and this lantern is we just want to kind of paint along the lines. But we want to stay away and we want to keep that lighter colour in there. And for the chest emblem, we just want to take a little bit on your brush and just get a good point, and we just want to kind of paint it on to just uh, colour in that gold. If you get a little bit uh, or spill some then don't worry too much. You can just go back in with the uh, with the pallid witch flesh just to tidy it up. So work your way around the model, get all the gold covered like that and we'll come back and we'll highlight it. And when we highlight it we'll highlight that but we'll also do all the trim as well next. Okay, so once that Reichland flesh shade is dry, we want to get the Liberator Gold on. Now, like I said before, we're going to be using this two ways. So, the first way is to just highlight the kind of raised areas of the of the darker gold. And what you'll see now is that it'll, as we kind of just use the shape of the model to catch the brush, you'll see it kind of gives you a nice shine. Same with the the emblem on the chest. Just paint up those kind of more raised areas and it gives you a nice effect. Along the back then you kind of just use the shape of the model to get the highlight because of course we're not painting everything, we're just painting the kind of sharp edges that catch the light. 
So that's how we do it there. The other thing we want to do is we want to pull it along the edges of the trim of the armour. So I think the best way, best place to show you is probably here. So we're just pulling it along the edge of that armour there. And then what you can see is it starts to give you that colour that uh, is shown on the box art. So go all the way around the trim of the armour, just like that. And it also kind of gives you that um, dark line in there as well, which uh, you see on the art. So you don't have to go in and shade it. Okay, so I hope you saw that. Um, I'll show you again here real quick. So we just want to move the brush along the edges, just like that. And now you see that's a much quicker exercise doing this than it was kind of blocking in all that brown where it gives you a really nice uh, effect. So work your way around the model, getting all the gold highlighted and then um, kind of in a really good place we'll come back and do the silver metallics next. So that gold work has uh, come out quite nicely. We want to make it pop just a little bit more. So all we're going to do, and we're going to use this very, very sparingly, is a little bit of chrome from Vallejo Model Air. Which is kind of like a really bright silver and we just want to put this on the kind of the, the sharpest edges and you can see there I'm just using the side of the brush to pull it along the kind of the design of the model and that way you get a nice sharp highlight without having to worry too much uh, about messing up so there we are, that's sharpened up quite nice. I'm just going to pop around, see if there's anything else I can do. Uh, and then we'll come back, we'll have a look at the kind of silver armour next. We'll use that chrome uh, to base then all the, all the kind of uh, scale type armour like this. So just work your way around again, being careful not to cover anything you've already finished. And this, uh, the chrome covers really well, so you shouldn't have too much of an issue just getting this done in one single coat and again if you're not sure which bits of silver check the box art just to make sure that you get everything and we'll come back and we'll uh, shade and highlight all that next to pop a little bit of shade into these all the silver metallics I guess I'm going to use a, a real small amount of uh, Drakenhof nightshade so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it in and make sure it goes into all the, the gaps like that. Then I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm just going to pull it down to pull that kind of dragon off away from the kind of raised parts of the scales. So do that on all the little bits of silver. Painted the sword as well. Um, let that dry, you come back and we'll see how it looks after we pull the paint away. Um, and we may then look to just give it a little bit of a, uh, a highlight with the chrome. Once that Drakenhof nightshade's dried over the chrome, you can see it's looking pretty good and actually uh, gives a really nice effect and kind of quite bright. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get some chrome on my brush and then I'm going to wipe the brush off on some on a paper towel. And what I'm going to do is paint down. So it catches just the most kind of exposed edges. And this is kind of like a, a wet over brush type thing. But it's nice because it gives you, uh, just kind of pulls in that shine. Uh, just to kind of put some of the silver back in. And when we add the blue later, it'll really set everything off. Okay, so do that over all the silver you've done. And then we'll come back and we'll do the, uh, the black shoes next. And then we'll do the kind of the leather and the wood. I'm really happy with how this lumineth is turning out. So we're going to catch, uh, sorry, catch. We're going to kind of focus on getting the some of the darker bits done now. So we're going to start off with the boots. So these are blacks, just a bad and black. And the main thing is that we want to take our time and make sure that we don't get any of it over anything we've already finished. So it can be easier said than done if you're a little bit too excited and your your brush strokes are a bit quick. So just take it, take it easy. Relax, enjoy it. We're going to have a great looking Lumineth army after all this. So we've got the boots, but we've also got the gloves to do as well. So with the gloves, just make sure that you don't actually go over anything you've already finished. 
that gold is uh, is looking good. We don't really want to spoil it. Okay, so off you go, finish that, and we'll come back and we'll highlight it next. Highlighting the black is really simple, just a little bit of Mechanica standard grey. And what we're looking for is just the kind of sharp edges there. Let's move the brush along, and then on the kind of fingers and the thumbs, just picking out the individual one. Just so we get that kind of a uh, little bit of interest. If you want to kind of go lighter grey and mix some white into it, just to kind of uh, really kind of set it off, you can, but I, I don't think there's any need to. I'm happy with how that kind of looks. Just make sure you do both feet. So there we are, that's the black highlighted, and we're going to move on to the leather next. So for the leather, we've got kind of the scarbard there, we've got the shield where it kind of connects, but I'm also going to paint the, the wood in the same colour. So all we want to do to start with is we just want to base everything with Rhinox Hide. So water it down a little bit. You might need uh, two coats, especially on some of the kind of the bigger areas. Uh, like the scarbard. So work your way around. Like I say, we're going to do the the wooden poles coming out the back as well. Just take your time. Try not to get any of it on the the banner itself. Because again, you know, we can always paint over it. It just saves us a little bit of time in the long run. So get that all that leather and the wood based, and then we'll come back. We'll highlight it all next. So that rhinox hide down the first. Highlight we're going to do is going to be Doom Bull Brown. And we're just looking to put a thin line of it kind of over the Rhinox there. When it comes to this section here, which oh, the scarboard rather, we're just going to use the shape of the model to just kind of pull that out. Um, and I'm just going to kind of just a little highlight in there as well, just to add a little bit of interest. Uh, and then for the the kind of the, the wooden poles, I just want to take the brush up and down it like that, and you get a nice little highlight in there. And you can do it on both sides as well to make sure that it catches everywhere. And then uh, we'll just pop one more highlight on it, and that's the leather and wood done. And then just to finish off the leather, we're just going to use a little bit of scrag brown. Again, we're just looking to catch the edge, just like that. And again, we're looking to kind of just catch along there. And then the same for the, for the wood, we're just trying to catch. It gives a, gives a nice highlight and just brightens up the wood quite a bit so we're, we've made really good progress I think that's all the bits and pieces done uh, so we're going to move on to the blue next and the blue is kind of the last stage for the model you can paint the base how you want but this is the bit that's really going to kind of help set uh, set the model off in terms of what we're painting blue we've kind of got the banners just be careful around the insert we've got the uh, underskirt there and we've got the, the glyph on the shield and any um, any bits of ribbon that you find so the colour I'm going to use for this is Calador Sky Love this blue. It kind of really reminds me of the the blue used on the old uh, old fashioned high elf armies from uh, from the world that was and Warhammer. So take your time, get that round, uh, and get it into kind of all the gaps. And uh, you may need two coats in some places, but try and do it so you, you can get away with one. I'm probably gonna need two there. Uh, but I'd rather do that than have it look too thick. We've got the shield glyph as well. And there is quite a lot of blue on the on the helmet with the feathers. But I'm not going to do those with Calador Sky. I'll show you a really neat trick how we can kind of get two tones. But only actually uh, worry about painting one bit of blue. It'll all become clear because uh, my explanation was absolutely rubbish. So get around there, get all this painted in blue. And then we'll come back and we'll uh, shade it next. That's all that blue's down. We want to shade it, so we're going to take a little bit of Drakenhof Nightshade, not too much in the brush, and just pop it in the uh, creases there, just to add a nice bit of depth. And then when it comes to the the banners, 
just want to move it around we'll cover the whole banner just take your time and be careful when you kind of come towards the the edge we don't want uh, to get any on the the white if we can if you do it's not the end of the world just go back in and tidy it up so get that done and on the other side and then we'll come back and highlight it next the first highlight we're going to use the very aptly named techless blue so for the kind of under dress you can just pull a line down just like that nice and straightforward and then we've got the kind of ribbon I guess it is here I'm just going to highlight the kind of raised parts same with the shield we can go for a fairly chunky highlight on the shield, but we're just kind of focusing on those uh, top areas. Catching the side of the model where we can. So that's where we know the light's going to fall. And then on the banners, kind of similar, similar thing. We can kind of paint towards where the, where the creases and the folds are. So just work your way around the model just like that, leaving the kind of the darkest colours in the recesses and we'll come back and we'll pop a, one last uh, highlight on there. And then the last highlight on the blue, or the kind of last main highlight, we may put another one just to sharpen it up a little, is again the aptly named Lothern Blue. So I'm just going to pull that down the sharpest edges. So we're kind of looking through there at the the cloth and that just kind of makes that blue really stand out a bit more and then the same on the on the back here just nice and easy and then when it comes to the shield we're just looking to catch the the absolute edge rather than uh, kind of sectional highlights like we did with that uh, techless blue just now and that's starting to pop off the canvas uh, quite nicely and then we just want to catch on the kind of it's kind of the edges and the the sharpest areas on the banners so get that done and we'll see how it looks we may put a little uh, highlight with the blue um the other thing to do whilst we've got that uh, lothern blue out is we want to paint all of the uh, I, I was going to say feathers, they're not really feathers, but all of the headdress. So get a nice coat of Lothan Blue all over. You may need to do uh, two coats, so if you do, uh, make sure you do. And we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll finish off with a sharper blue highlight and then we'll uh, get to work on the, the headdress. So we're looking pretty good with uh, all the blues now. And I think we're just going to take uh, a little bit of blue horror just to finish up uh, maybe some of the kind of harder highlights. So I'm thinking places like the shield. So remember what we did with the, the chrome silver earlier where we kind of picked it out along the kind of highest facing edges. That's kind of the same thing we're going to do with the, the blue horror there just to give a little bit extra in terms of the the kind of the lightness uh, on the on the blue there and the other thing I'm going to do is you see we've got that headdress all painted with the uh, with the Lothan blue is we're just going to use the blue horror to highlight it all so all I'm going to do is I'm just got all these kind of strands I'm just going to move the the blue horror through so we got a nice highlight on there. Now you might be thinking, well, hang on a minute, some of this is darker than, than what I'm working on. And that's true. But what I'll show you is how we can paint it all the same and then just use a contrast paint to just change the, the hue of the blue, which will give you the same effect as what you can see on the box art. So get that all done and we'll come back and I'll show you how to do that. Box art, where you've got these little gems, that's where the... Uh, the headdress is the darker blue so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of Leviadon blue which is contrast paint wipe most of it off your brush and we're just going to pop it uh, over those areas 
the, on the box art of the darker blue. Just like that. And then what you'll see is as it dries, it'll pull up the highlights from underneath it. So you don't have to go in. I mean, you can go in and put a, a, a few extra highlights in there if you want to. Uh, but there's no uh, rush to kind of get there to do it. And then once you work your way around the front, like I'm doing here, you can go in and paint those gems with some Liberator Gold. And then you can make sure you do the back side as well. So you can see it there as it starts to dry. It's really starting to kind of come along in terms of showing through the highlight that we've got underneath. So work your way all the way around. And then when we come back, we're pretty much close to finishing this model. We've got a couple more highlights to do. And then we are complete. We've got that headdress is looking pretty good now. So let's do the face. Now, because it's all enclosed, I'm not going to go over the top. I'm just going to use some Gulliman Flesh um, and paint that into the kind of the, the gaps we've got there. And that gives, uh, gives us a really quick, nice and easy uh, face, which I hope you agree. Uh, and don't forget on the kind of the model there we've got the neck as well so the key is not to swamp the model uh, with the gum and flesh but it's really easy to do uh, make that nice and effective so we're pretty much done we've got a couple of things um so we've got to the lantern and the gem on the head uh, and then if we want or if you want you can just use a little bit of white to, to do some highlighting so we'll do the gems and the lantern next the colour I'm going to use for everything is Magos Purple. Now, this is a really thin contrast paint, but it, it, it kind of gives you a nice coloured effect. You can use any colour contrast paint for this if you want. Um, if you've not got Magos Purple, don't think, oh, I've got to go and buy it. Uh, cause it's not one of those paints I use very often, but it's really good for this kind of thing. So I'm not putting too much in. Just kind of painting around the gold. And if we put too much in, like a little bit there, just wipe your brush and just wick it out. But it gives that kind of nice tint. When it comes to the the gem, again, you can do the gem any colour you want. But I'm going to use this Magos Purple just to kind of reflect the box art. So once that's uh, kind of started to dry a little bit, I'm just going to pop another kind of little bit towards the bottom there like that. And that gives you a nice gem effect. So the last thing we've got to do is just pop a little bit of white highlight, finish the base to match the rest of your army. Otherwise, this chap is done. White highlight is just for the real sharpest areas. So where we've got on the kind of the helmet there, I'm just going to roll it down. Just along that sharp edge. Just to get a nice kind of differentiation of colour. And that, that's turned out really nicely on the helmet. Um, for the armour itself, you might want to just kind of nice little line of white across the top. You can see it's quite subtle. And then you've got the shield there on the back, so you might want to just highlight that top edge around like that. Just adds a little bit of volume, albeit very, very subtle. So there we are, I'm going to glue the head on, I'm going to complete the base, um, just to probably just do like a normal rocky type colour there, and then uh, we'll come back, have a look at him on the turntable. So there we have it, this Lumineth Realm Lord is ready for battle, I think he looks great, I really can't wait to paint up the rest of the set. Thanks for watching, I really hope you've enjoyed the video, if you have please leave a like and a comment down below, it really does help me improve the quality of the channel and make sure you guys are getting what you want to see. You can check out my recommended equipment in the description. You can also get up to 20% off with Goblin Gaming on all your Lumineth Realm Lords or any wargaming materials you might need. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.